Diet Talks podcast. We're sitting here in what I call the upper room. Um, if you know uh, the story of the upper room is where the Holy Spirit came to the disciples and then they began to speak in tongues and stuff like that. And I just thought I would name this loft, which is actually the children's living room, um, where they do their own thing and hang out. And as you can see, I'm sitting here with my co-host who's sleeping on a job right now, Andy, my dog. <laughs> yeah, she's sleeping on a job. Yep, you are. Mm -hmm. He says hi. <laughs> um, but anyway, I wanted to, t to share a little story that happened to me this week. And uh, I have a scripture that I want to read to you to encourage you guys. Um, and I've been debating if I sh when to share it. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you guys just to kind of get our uh, mindset in the word and um, and just let it minister to us. Um, it's in Romans eight eighteen, and it says, and it's through uh, eighteen through twenty one. It says the sufferings we have now are nothing compared to the great glory that will be shown to us. Verse nineteen. Everything God made is waiting with excitement for God to show His children his children's glory completely verse 20 everything god made was changed to become useless not by its own wish but because god wanted it and because all along there was this hope that everything god made would be set free from ruin to have the freedom and glory that belonged to god's children and i thought that was really encouraging and it, and it just it kind of goes with the um the story I'm about to tell you that happened this week with my son, Elijah. Um, for those of you that don't know, Elijah was born with a thing called PCD for short, primary cilia dyskinesia. And we didn't know um, that he had this. We knew that there were some things um, always coming against him, like he kept getting ear infections and other infections and stuff like that. And eventually, after about four almost five years of going back and forth to multiple different um, specialist doctors, we come to find out that he has a rare, rare birth defect type thing uh, where the little hairs in your lungs and in your sinuses and other areas that, that have these little cilia hairs that move and push uh, fluid out of the way to help clear the body, um, he does not have that. And I think if he does, it, 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 it doesn't move or doesn't work um, if he were to have that. But I don't think he does, um, according to what I have read in other articles that describe and explain what this is. And um, so for the longest time, we've, we've dealt with um, therapy. Now, behind me, as you can see right there, right there, is his machine and he has a nebulizer on top that green thing on top is the nebulizer and the machine and it's connected if you can see right there where i'm pointing at is his um, vest and mask and he has to do this every day twice a day to keep him um, flowing well to keep him healthy to keep his lungs clear it, the vest actually vibrates to help break things up and to help him cough things out and it just all in all is supposed to help him and the nebulizer is supposed to help him open up his lungs and airways and stuff so that if he does need to cough any excess um, mucus or fluid he can get it out a little easier and we have to do this every day for the rest of his life and he knows this and yes it's it's grueling some days and some days i don't even want to do it and i and I have to get on him and he's always just like, oh, I don't want to do this. But really, he he has to and it's for his own good. Otherwise, he ends up in the hospital if he doesn't. And he knows this as well. And, um, and, and so this week, um, my husband was out of town for work uh, in Florida and I had to, you know, um, I had to be that that strong parent where I I'm the mom that usually likes to try to be a little bit on the passive side and try to be more patient and understanding 
And then I also had to be kind of like the dad side. They're a little bit more assertive, a little bit more strong-willed, and um, maybe somewhat demanding, which is kind of hard to balance when you're a mom. And this week, almost every day, every morning was just button heads and difficult, which I get it. Uh, we have to get up at six in the morning. We have to get going. We have to get this therapy rolling. And then I get up with, and then I get the other kids up and go and going. And um, we have to leave our house at least around 645, 650 in order to get into the carpool lane um, at a decent time. And, um, and so, you know, my mornings, my mornings, y'all are not fun at all especially when you have to herd uh, three kids, which is like herding cats, okay? Um, so we had some just some, I mean, we had some blow ups. We had some blow ups. And then what, I, I'm not happy about it. I'm not like, I, I don't even wanna admit what I had to do. I, I had to get, viciously like argh, you know I had to kind of well let's just say mama bear became grizz, grizzly bear have you ever been there have you ever been grizzly bear you don't want to but the grizzly bear came out it did mama bear came to became to be grizzly grizzly bear and I had to kind of get up in his uh his little hula hoop space, the hula hoop space. I had to get up in that space and really get into him. And and I, I told him, I said, Elijah, this is no surprise to you. This is no surprise. You know, you know, and you know, you know that every morning we have to do this. Every night before you go to bed, we've got to do this. And he said, I know, but today, today, I just want to skip this morning. Can we just skip this morning? And I told him, I said, honey, if we do, if we let up, if we let up, sure. Okay. Maybe nothing will happen today. Maybe some, no, maybe nothing will happen tomorrow, but eventually maybe day four, eventually you're going to have this heaviness inside your chest and, and stuff are going to accumulate. And then you're start to, you're going to start to hurt again. And then you're going to go back sliding down and you're going to feel sick again. So we have to keep this regimen and you know this Elijah. And he's still crying and crying. And I was just like, God, I don't know what, to, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to do. This, this does suck. I wish you would just heal him like that and we'll be done with this. We don't have to go and do this anymore. And I just kind of felt like I heard God speak in my heart. And he went, you know what? I created him for a reason, Tekla. You just got to trust I said, well, can you please hurry up and give me an answer a little bit here of what to say next? Because this, this is, this is tough. This is grueling. This is a horrible fight that I have. I need, I want to help encourage him and of course help encourage me. And so the Lord said, this is what he said. And I told Elijah, he said, um, he said through me to Elijah, you know what, Elijah? Guess what? One of these days, you're going to have kids. And those kids are going to go, Dad, Dad, Dad. Hey, Dad, I need you here, Dad. They're, they, they're doing something. They hit me. Dad, I need you to fix this. Dad, and, and your kids are just going at you, going at you. And you know what, son? You're going to remember this, what, I, what I'm saying to you now. You're going to be like, Oh, sorry, I got my vest on. I got to do therapy. I can't help you right now. And you're going to be thanking the Lord that you've got a legit excuse to have 20 minutes to yourself, Elijah. And you're going to like it. One day you're going to look back and you're like, gosh, my mom was right. She told me that, that God created me so that I can have this machine 
as an, a good excuse just to sit still for 20 minutes. And I said, Elijah, maybe you should look at this opportunity as a true opportunity from God. You see, God knows how busy you like to be. And he knows that you are always going. And it's true. I'm not exaggerating. My son is a go, 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 go. And I said, Elijah, God knew that you needed something to make you sit down for 20 minutes so he can talk to you. And that's how much he loves you. You were created special for, for, this, for this purpose. So you can just sit there and listen to God. It's, he's actually created you in this certain special way so you can sit for 20 minutes to yourself and he used this excuse just for you, Elijah. So that's why you're extra special. And he gave me this little look like, yeah, I think you're right. I don't want to admit you're right, but I, I see your point, Mom. I see your point. And he just kind of went, mm, yeah. And let me tell you something. That was yesterday, in fact. And let me tell you, I had a little breakthrough, and thank God. He, and I think he had a little breakthrough today because get this. I just told you we get up around six. Actually, I, I get up 10 till six and I give myself about four minutes just to stretch in bed and get my wits about me. And then I get up, I mosey up the stairs. First thing I go, I go straight to Elijah because it takes about uh, five minutes to get him going, right? Well, this morning, y'all, was awesome. Let me tell you. I get up. I'm I'm still trying to wake up. I'm go, I'm going around. Andy's Andy's barking at something stupid. I don't even know what he's barking at. I look around. There's nothing there. He's barking at. He's just barking. So I'm like, well, maybe he needs to go to the bathroom. So I grab him and I toss him out there. And yes, by the way, I have to toss this dog because when it's wet and rainy out, he's a little prince. It, he. Some, there's some days he'll touch his paw if the paw touches the grass. And the, if the grass is wet, he goes back and looks at me like, I don't feel like going out there. I actually have to toss him out there and tell him to go potty. Yes. Crazy. I know. Drives me nuts. But it doesn't happen every day. So don't think I'm always tossing my dog out the door. I <laughs> just Today is a, is a rainy day. So I kind of have to give him a little encouragement. And I have to tell him. And sometimes he'll run out there and do it. And sometimes he, he goes out there and it's raining. And he's just like. And then he comes back. And I, I look at him. And I say, Andy, you know the rules. You have to go to the bathroom before you come inside. So I'm sorry. You're just going to have to do it and get it over with and go. So I did that. I did that. And then I'm like, okay, now I got to go upstairs. And I got to get Elijah up. Well, get this. I get upstairs and I hear his therapy going. And he had a smile on his face. And I said, Elijah, what are you doing? He was, are you surprised, mom? And I said, yes, son, I'm about to faint. I'm so surprised. What are you doing? And I noticed he didn't have his mask on. I said, oh, hey, Elijah, you've got to put your mask on. He goes, no, mom, I already did that. And I look. I look around his machine and get this. His machine said it only had four minutes left. Y'all, he was up way before six o'clock and he was four minutes away of being done with his therapy. <laughs> That's awesome. I said, Elijah, this warms my heart. This is a blessing because you know, every day this past week, it has been really rough with you. He goes, yeah, I know, mom. And I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought I'm gonna surprise you. And and I, you know what? I learned something today. I go, what did you learn? I don't really like to be told what to do. <laughs> oh, he gets that from me. Well, he gets that from both of us really. But I thought, oh my goodness. And here's another gracious thing about my son. And he's just growing up. Something just kicked inside of him. Praise you, God. But you know what else he did that was so sweet? He not only did it, he not only took responsibility 
and decided to just be a sweet little boy. Now, I know this ain't probably going to happen every day, but knock on wood, it, I'm hoping from here on out it will. But, you know, he's seven years old. But he decided to do this. And he decided to go to his sister's door and close it quietly. And he went to his brother's door and closed it quietly before he went on his therapy machine because it's kind of loud. He goes, Mom, I closed their door because I didn't want to wake him up. I'm just going, oh my gosh. <laughs> I am doing something right. You know, I said, oh, son, that's awesome. That's brilliant. That's, God, that's great. I'm, and I'm also going in my head thinking, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Everything God made is waiting with excitement for God to show his children, his children glory, glory completely. <sighs> That's just a little glimpse, y'all. That was a glimpse. That was a gold nugget. That was something I'm probably going to put on my faith shelf for later. <laughs> All right, y'all, that's all I have for you today. I hope this has blessed you. If it has, please give it a shum. Uh, shum. I was trying to put thumb and share together. Okay. Give it a thumbs up and share to someone that you know that may need some kind of encouragement today. I'll see you around next time here at Tech Talks Podcast uh, here on Mondays. All right. See you next time.